There's a little transitional plane I've always wanted. It's called the Stanley 122. Some call it a Liberty Bell, even though Liberty Bell was really a, a series of planes that Stanley made. Uh, this little plane they started making in 1876 to celebrate the centennial and they made it through 1918 and I thought I'd just do a little cleanup on this and a restoration. Taking this apart you uh, get a sense for uh, the fact that it was a fairly cheap plane when it was made. The screws are steel, they're not brass. The uh, adjustment on the lever cap is uh, steel. It looked like it was nickel plated, but uh, that is kind of worn off. They have an interesting blade adjustment in that this little thing I'm removing here with this bolt is just a little kind of a flat stud that goes in a slot and is moved up and down by a, a loop that you stick your finger through to move the blade forward and backwards. So there's really basically two things holding the chip breaker to the blade. This little uh, niche with the bolt and the regular large screw that holds those together. Again, this screw that holds the knob down is just a steel screw, even though you'll see later that I polished all these screws, again, just to add a nice sparkle to the plane. The knob and the body of the plane are both beach, and this knob was actually in great shape. It was dirty and had paint splatter on it and stuff like that, but it was in great shape. The rest of the cast iron part of the plane is held to the body of the plane with just two screws here that I'm removing. These 122s have a lot of areas where the cast iron is thin or gets down to a very narrow piece and so you when you're buying one of these used you want to make sure there aren't any cracks in the cast iron because there are some weak points. This one even though it was dirty and the japanning was in pretty bad shape and there was a fair amount of rust, the cast iron was intact. All the little parts were intact. And so once I get these screws off and remove this cast iron part, you'll see the underside uh, almost looks brand new. Uh, still very shiny japanning and you get the sense that uh, it basically had a fairly easy life. The bottom of the plane was pretty scarred up, but it just took a little bit of sanding to get that flattened out. And so once I'd taken this apart, my plan was to just clean as best I could, sharpen, polish up the screws, and then I was going to repaint the black part because I've got kind of a little collection of these transitional planes. I think they look so good when they're black and shiny. Here I've polished up these screws just a little bit of time with sandpaper and then a buffer and you can get the screws to just gleam like chrome. Here's the uh, the body of the plane. Again it's beech wood. This one was in pretty good shape. It just needed a little cleanup with some steel wool and some oil. And then I just got a piece of 220 sandpaper here laying it on a piece of glass to hold it level. I marked the bottom of the plane with a pencil back and forth and ran it a few times on this paper and saw that the pencil lines were coming off uniformly throughout the plane. So the plane was actually already level and I think maybe we worry a little bit too much about that. But this leveled out really quickly, uh, cleaned up really quickly with a coat of paste wax on the bottom. It's very, very smooth. and. There's something about a transitional plane with wood on wood that are uh, satisfying to use. And again, I, I've got these mostly just as a collection, not that, I, that they're much of users, but uh, they're fun to collect because I think they just look so good. So anyway, after a, quite a few strokes on this uh, sandpaper, I got the bottom looking fairly nice. Again, marking it with a pencil 
and running it back and forth until all the pencil marks were removed and I had a uniform finish on the bottom. The mouth of this plane is also in excellent shape. There are no chips, no big gaping uh, sections in it. It was very tight to the blade and so made for a, a decent plane when it came time to actually use it. And I've got a still shot here of the bottom of the plane when I was done with it and you can see it's very uniform and flat. Next was the body and I used my homemade sandblaster. Uh, you saw a picture there of uh, the stuff called agri-grit. It's ground walnut shells and then just a spray nozzle on a compressor and you shoot that at the uh, japanning and you can see the japanning is completely gone. I'm down to raw cast iron. Uh, the sandblasting removes even chunks of rust and the idea here was I wanted to flatten this surface so that when I repainted it it had more of a surface like a car rather than a, a cast iron so I'm, I spent some time sanding the cast iron and I used then some thick bodied primer and then I used a glazing compound uh, made by Bondo, uh, they use this on cars, to sort of trowel over the surface to give me a really flat surface so that when I painted it, and you'll see at the end, you get a very shiny kind of a mirror-like surface. So here I just uh, protected the parts of the lever cap I didn't want to get paint on, and I shot a coat of fairly thick-bodied gray primer on the cast iron parts of the plane. This gives you something to start with for sanding. It also gives you something that the glazing compound will adhere to a little bit better. And so I just do a fairly heavy coat of primer and then a little bit of light sanding and then I go to the glazing compound to fill little depressions or to fill out the rough areas and you'll see after just a couple of applications of the glazing compound a little bit of sanding in between you can get a really nice painted surface with just uh, rattle cans. So here's the glazing compound and what I usually use to put this on is just a, like a credit card. Uh, you just sort of trowel it on with a credit card or some kind of a plastic card. It gives you a level surface as you drag it over little depressions or little rough spots in the casting. It tends to fill the low spots and rub off of the high spots. I put it on kind of generously because you're going to come back over this with sandpaper and what you end up with when you're done is a not mirror smooth but well you could if you went application after application after application but you end up with a very very smooth surface compared to just shooting paint on the raw cast iron so here I am just putting it on the surfaces where there was a lot of roughness and then I'll go over this with sandpaper and level it out. I'm definitely not a purist when it comes to Japanning. Some people would think it was a crime that I blasted the, sand, the uh, Japanning off, but I just like the way these planes look. I really don't care. I'm not uh, into the value and the collectability and all that. I just want nice looking planes in my collection and I think they look nice when you smooth them out and put a nice coat of paint on them so uh, for all those who believe in Japanning I have left that on a lot of my planes but these I just think they look so good when they're uh, shiny and smooth I uh, spent the time doing this leveling so it takes a little bit of sanding uh, 
uh, I was told years ago, and it's very true, that if you can feel imperfection with your finger, you'll see it in the paint. And so I just test and test and test with my finger over these surfaces to be satisfied that I'm leveling it out uh, well enough using the glazing compound and the primer. And I, I just keep applying more glazing compound and sanding until I'm satisfied that once it takes paint, it's going to take it in a smooth way. And again, it's not dead perfect, but uh, it makes for a very nice looking plane when it's all done. Doesn't affect the usability of the plane at all. It, uh, it just looks good, and that's really all I'm after. So here I am now with the black paint, and I'm just going to shoot several light coats. This paint that I'm using, at least, uh, you need to, when you recoat, you need to recoat within less than an hour or more than 24 hours. So you kind of have to stay after it. You put a coat on, let it sit a reasonable amount of time, and then put another coat on. And uh, it took, you know, several passes, but I got, I thought, a very nice coat of paint on both the lever cap and the cast iron body of the plane. And you'll see at the end when I'm showing finished pictures that uh, I think it took the paint very well. Came out with a very nice shiny surface. I've got, like I say, a collection of these old transitionals and I've painted every one of them I think and uh, for refurbished the beach and again they just make a great collection it's not like I use them I do use them now and then but I've got them more as a collection to look at than I do as users because I have plenty of steel planes to use as users so just back and forth with uh, this black paint. Then I let it sit for a couple of days before I handled it because it had just a little bit of tack to it. So I let it sit for a couple of days before I went to reassembly. So here's the body of the plane. Again, all it took was a little bit of steel wool and some oil and then a coat of paste wax sides, top and bottom. And then here's the stainless, or excuse me, the uh, cast iron part going back on. The two small screws that hold it to the body. I polished those heads on the buffing wheel. So I got those looking very shiny, kind of like chrome. I got the screw that holds the knob very shiny, kind of like chrome and the big adjusting knob that holds the lever cap, I got very shiny as well. So when the whole plane was together, it had a nice sparkle to it, uh, kind of setting off the shiny black part over against all the uh, steel parts where the steel shows. I didn't spend a ton of time on the blade and the lever cap. I gave them a good going over with steel wool and did spend quite a bit of time sharpening it because the the blade was uh, nicked up and kind of beat up. So I spent some time on a Tormac getting the blade 90 degrees and then ran it over 220 sandpaper then 400 sandpaper then a rough diamond stone then a fine diamond stone and then finally a leather strop with a polishing compound and got the blade very, very, very sharp. I didn't bother making video of that because you've seen plenty of blade sharpening going on. So it tightened down very well, uh, fit very securely on the wooden part. Just put two screws holding the body down and the larger screw holding the knob and the front part of the body down. Put the lever cap together with the uh, polished knob. Put the blade in. These do have that weird blade adjustment thing on them so you've got to 
kind of fuss with that to get it to have the travel be such that you can have kind of zero to some kind of a fine cut. And once I put it together, I just tried it. Took a while fighting the adjustment, but after a while I got it tuned up to take some nice thin shavings. So here's just a quick shot of the plane doing what planes do. And, you know, works remarkably well for something that is super cheap to buy and I think very nice looking uh, sitting on the shelf. So just wanted to prove that it did actually work. You could use it in a pinch as a smoother. And again, getting adjusted to a fine cut is probably the hardest part, but once you get it there, uh, it stays put. So here it is finished. Just to give you an idea how it looks nice and shiny with those polished parts. Uh, left a little bit of patina in the blade to make it look old. It has some dust on it there, but you can see that it, the back side of it came out very shiny. That still has a very cast look to it. The beach came out looking really nice. And uh, as, a, as a completed unit, it really looks great. Here it is with a collection. This is with a 22, a 35, and a 36. My little collection of small Stanley transitionals. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe and thanks for watching.